the high and dry. And now, you can already see that it's going to be the mystery shop as well from Karina. As Erwin is going to get bursted down by the damage from the Fanny early on. And man, that is a lot of damage. That is what the high and dry is going to bring to the table. Taz has, is going to be very ag aggressively moving around, going for those 1v1s. And unless Argentina has solid control in the lanes, then they can actually, you know, that's how they need to play to get the opportunities to shut down, to collapse onto Taz, who is going over aggressive. Here though, Jotun is going to have a bit of a rougher time in his jungle as Taz was able to pick up that kill. It is going to be a one kill lead early on so far, but that's something that can really get the snowball going for Team Indonesia right now as Dreams just gets out that perfect match. Jotun still is able to get level four a bit faster than Taz though, even after suffering that invade early on. Let's watch that there's no real counter to the engage coming in from Erwin with the Flicker Fatal Links combo. No purifies, for example, but we'll have to see. Does Indonesia have a strategy in mind? A counter? Maybe through maneuvering to positioning? We have to see later in the mid game. But for now, the Atlas cannot be as aggressive when it comes to these skirmishes. So we'll have to wait until about level 4. And now with the first turtle spawning, you can see action building up near that top side. Both teams are playing it a bit passive here early on, but wait a minute, a solo kill in the gold lane by Brands, the Indonesian king of marksmen there, as he is able to actually win out up against Whoa. the damage. Taz, out of nowhere with Dreams, finds the Divine Judgment, now Taz just going mad with the cables, and that's gonna be Hijume who picks up a double kill. Papa Dog caught in his own jungle, Psychots just does some damage, puts him back and forces him to recall. Two minutes in, and it's Indonesia who has a pretty solid lead. Just like that, two kills on the table. That is how fast, that is the X factor we talk about whenever Indonesia is being mentioned. Out of nowhere, these plays will just keep happening, so Argentina need to be on their toes. The composition of Indonesia is all about that pickoff, so they cannot leave their member alone. I think we saw Meteoro use the Cult Altar, but it was just a bit too late, unfortunately. And that cannot happen again, because that is one of the core ways they have to counter Indonesia right now. Three minutes in, that's a turtle secured for free by Indonesia. Psychots in that XP lane as well, getting a pretty substantial lead with Brands doing the same. So far, all three lanes are controlled by Indonesia. And this is a good read as well. Brands knows something is up, knows that Erwin has been missing on the map for quite a long time, so he plays it safe. Meanwhile, Indonesia, Dreams, and Hijume, they don't decide to rotate. They decide to just keep that pressure in the mid lane to, again, relieve some of that pressure from the other lanes. I'm just waiting for the time where Taz will start exploding out of nowhere, because right now, it's a ticking time bomb, man. He is, he is farming up. But once he feels that he has the necessary items, he's about to go absolutely wild. And as you say that, oh my goodness, Taz does so much damage. Hijume pops that black shoes to run away from Erwin's possible engage here. As Psychots tries to make his way into that mid lane, just again opening up the map for the rest of his teammates. And that damage is absolutely absurd, man. Meteoro just disappeared. They're trying to do it onto Erwin right now with the Divine Judgment. But Oof. Erwin pops that perfect match. Very well timed to get out of the Divine Judgment. Taz on the Fanny right now. An absolute menace. And I don't think anyone from Argentina can deal with him 1v1. They need to find a way, a team fight, force him into these situations where the high and dry won't really have a lot of impact. He won't be able to actually get those solo kills. But it's easier said than done. As we say that, Oh man, he used Whoa, the Shadow what? Stampede, the Cold Alter HP is gone just like that, but Minioro has the flicker. You can see the kill pressure already from Taz on the Fanny. That's why it's a signature pick, and that's why usually we see it banned out. The Cold Alter, man, we talked about how it's only very situationally good against teams with limited amounts of damage, maybe big burst damage, so that the second life can be preserved for you know, for your team to actually have more impact, but when the Cult Alter HP gets taken out like that, it's too dangerous. Erwin with a perfect match, again, has to use it defensively. A very different Atlas gameplay for oh. Erwin here today, as Meteoro is going to be chunked low, goes in for Shadow Stampede, Dreams gets targeted down, but it's only the Roamer. A shutdown as Jotun puts Argentina on the board, but it's Taz who picks up a trade up top. Taz now going on to Papa Dog with a cutthroat as mm. well. The Flicker ready to save Papa Dog, but it's still 
A solid trade, one for one right now. So unfortunate, Hijume was, was the one who actually fell in the engagement. He is the one with three kills right there. So it's not ideal. I think he chased a bit too much. But of course, we see again the damage potential coming in from Indonesia. A lot of poke damage, and if you get too low, Taz does not waste any time at all securing that kill, taking you out of the Land of Dawn. Now it just goes to the Discipline game, right? They already have a pretty good lead, 3,000 gold that's going to be building again. Taz, looking for that play, jumps in just to bait out that Cult Alter, and now it's gone. Meteoro has nowhere to go. Bro. A brilliant decision by Taz as well. He didn't get turret aggro, so he just played around the minions, forced Meteoro to pop that Cult Alter. It's... it's pretty... pretty impressive. Very impressive. And it's just too fast. If you wait for the right moment, you might get taken out before using it, but the Fatal Links is being used, Mirko. Only to Dreams right now, who is the roamer, who can soak in a whole lot of damage, and now it comes down to Taz, who's able to rotate down below. Jotun finds a pick, Brands gets taken down. That's gonna be a 2v1 situation. A two-for-one trade as well, but it is gonna be equalized in that mid lane. Psychots, ooh, flickers forward, gets the double kill, and makes it a three for two. That axe accuracy coming in from Psychots. A three and two, three for two, not ideal, but I guess at this point, Argentina need to get their sel themselves on the board right here. If they play a bit too safe, they're just waiting for the members of Indonesia to set up for the next play. And as we can see, it can come just like that. Divine Judgments, Bravest Fighters, and of course, Taz just slicing and dicing all the way through in the back line. The damage, look at that. He had, he went for two items early on. It's gonna be the Heptasis and also the Melthic Roar. So he knows that Argentina are gonna start to pile up on that physical defense. Going for just physical penetration as early as seven minutes in the game will basically mean he'll deal, deal true damage. Not to mention he is up against essentially three heroes that can go tank. So it's a very smart adjustment decision in the item build. And now with that lead, Indonesia is just pressuring away the members of Argentina from this turtle. They're still able to secure the purple buff. But right now, full control for Indonesia unless Argentina does something unexpected. Erwin with that flicker, we've seen him make the place happen. But can he replicate the same success? Two ultimates burnt out by Taz. What? Go away. Cult Alter, two very crucial ultimates when it comes down to the team fight. And just like that, the engage potential that Argentina had, the pick potential with Erwin, it disappears because of the counter engage that Indonesia can constantly threaten with. Dreams jumps in, finds the Divine Judgment onto Meteoro, knowing he does not have that Cult Alter. And Brands picks him up like it's nothing. Dreams now opening up the map, gonna be targeted down. Dreams gonna be taken down by Argentina. A one for one, but it is the mid laner taken down for the roamer. Look at the mid lane though, the wave management coming in from the Indonesians. We've talked about this since the drafting phase and Argentina is absolutely feeling it. Even when they get a kill, it doesn't look like they're getting any control and look at the aggression! Papadog dove under the tier one. Taz styling and Hijume picks up the kill. Papadog 0-2-1 currently. Again, he tried his best early on. He went even in lane against Psychots, but because Taz has had such a good time around the map, just getting kills and getting the snowball rolling, he can start to melt these tanks down. Psychots up top winning the bush, jumps in with the Bravest Fighter, forces the go away before the fight even starts. Erwin is forced Whoa. to use the perfect match now. Psychots gets caught, but he baits enough of the resources out. One frontliner for another. Erwin for Psychots. Taz. Indonesia looks for the re-engage. And Taz is a monster. Jumps in like it's nothing, jumps out like it's nothing. How is he able to maneuver like in curves on a fanny? We usually we see linear Straight movements lines, yeah. with the cables, but this man, he is drifting right now. He, he, it does feel like he's drifting, you know? He's playing those cables in a way <laughs> where it looks like he is actually going around the walls. But this... Wait. It is his signature thing. This is the reason we usually never see it get left open. And this man was a mid laner, so now in the jungle position, this man is just flexing all this mechanical skills, the killer instinct as well. And when he is that accurate with the cables, how can you like play as a backliner for Argentina, but Papadoc is the one being targeted? Melted down instantly here by Psychots and Brands. Erwin tried his best to pop that conceal and the perfect match to reach towards his teammate, but Papa Dog just gets bursted down too fast. Because, again, of the items, 
Even Brands with the Hunter Strike in the Melfic Roar, with the POD completed so early on. Man, he is the, he can actually just burst that whole team. Mm. Yeah, right as I say it, on cue, Brands. Pops that Renner, gets Meteoro to a quarter of his HP, swaps to the Bennett and clears out the wave easily with the BOD completed. Now, I need to ask you a question, Arashi. Argentina, how do they come back in the game if it's even still possible? They need to get a shot down some, hey, somehow, some way, man. I mean, they have some tools to get a catch, but they need to make the proactive movement. They can't wait for Indonesia to go in like this. Well, the call ultra's there. Oh, no! And gets baited in by Taz with the cables. Meteoro falls as well as that Psychots who finds the double. Brands completing the Haas Claws will mean that he will no longer need to recall. He can just hit a few minions, go for a few creeps in the jungle, and get back to full HP. Jotun trying his best to look for a play. Taz and the Brands with that combo. The snipe from the purple buff and Taz with the cables as Psychos jumps in once again onto the Bravest Fighter. But it is going to be the go away pop as well by Argentina. Meteoro backing off, call Alter already used. 11 minutes in and two base turrets have fallen. You see the discipline coming in from the Indonesians, having so much momentum and yet so, so patient. Snipe does not connect from Brands, but like I said, now with the call Alter, when do you pop it? Is it when Task comes flying in? Is it when Brands is charging up the Snipe because he can one-shot you as well? It's a, such a tough situation. Especially when all the responsibility is on you to keep your teams alive. Meteoro with a cult altar, and we can see that Erwin, he is definitely feeling the pressure. He needs to make a play, but if he tries too hard, if he forces it, this is what will happen. Indonesia can absolutely take over. 12 minutes in, this is... So far today, we have seen longer games than yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the f I think the longest game we saw yesterday was 11 minutes, and today we saw a game go all the way. Dreams, though, looking for the pick, finds it like it's nothing, but it's going to be the Cult Ultra, which is placed down. Taz looking for the plays, waiting for the Cult Ultra HP to be shrinked down, to be melted down as he goes in for re-engage. Getting the base turret, getting back as well, baiting a whole lot of resources for Brands to free hit on that back line. Two members falling for Argentina, Meteoro and Siv. The two damage dealers are still up, but the Snipes connects onto Siv, and that will mean Siv will have to recall. Taz finally rejoining his team, jumps in onto Jotun, goes in for the cut though, finds Meteoro, and he's looking for a double kill, looking for a triple kill onto Siv now. He does, no, he does get it in the end, a triple kill for Taz up against Argentina in a dominant game one.